Hello, my name is Lucrezia Milillo and I'm a Wolfson Scholar and PhD student at the Social Anthropology Department at the University of St. Andrews. My PhD project aims to expand our current understanding of the Andean quipu. Quipus are colorful knotted string devices used for record keeping before, during and after the Inca Empire. Quipus are important because they are the only pre-Hispanic written sources we have and would allow us to have an understanding of Andean history and worldview from a native perspective. We do know how the Incas standardized the quipu code because Inca quipus encode numbers in a base 10 system, like we do, but with knots. But what are these numbers counting? That's the big question. How would quipu encode qualitative and possibly narrative information? That's the question quipu scholars are trying to answer today. What we are going to investigate is provenance, morphology, and most importantly, the very materiality of these artifacts, because every single feature conveys meaning. Out of 1,200 quipus in collections all over the world, only less than 20 have been radiocarbon dated. Their colors and dyes have never been scientifically studied before, and even quipu fibers that are used for the very making of a quipu calls for deeper attention. As my background is in cultural anthropology and history, that's why for the development of this project, I'm currently collaborating with heritage scientists. Hi, my name is Marai Hacke. I'm a heritage scientist at the Swedish National Heritage Board. And together with my colleague, Sara Norrehed, we're here at the Museum of World Cultures to analyze two of the quipus that are part of the uh, project that Lucrezia has been describing. And the material analysis that we're doing here, this is just the first step of quite a few investigations um, carried out in different laboratories across Europe. And some of these are part of uh, an Iperion HS project. Iperion HS is an infrastructure for heritage science. And through that, we are gaining access to laboratories in Slovenia. It's the um, Heritage Macromolecular Laboratory that we're going to visit. And we're going to take samples to the National Institute of Nuclear Physics in Florence for radiocarbon dating. The organic dye stuffs will be analyzed at the Science for Cultural Heritage Laboratory at the University of Pisa. And the inorganic parts of the dye stuffs, we will be analyzing them at the Heritage Laboratory in Visby, which is part of the Swedish National Heritage Board. And as the very first part of all of this progression of different analytical steps, we are actually now here with two of our mobile instruments. It's an X-ray fluorescence instrument and technical photography. My name is Sara Norrhed and I am a heritage scientist working at the Heritage Laboratory at the Swedish National Heritage Board. During this week we have been using two different analytical techniques. One is called X-ray fluorescence or XRF and one is called technical photography. With XRF we analyze the elemental composition of the materials in the quipus. So we are able to detect differences in um, threads that for example have different colors. We can also map the distribution of an element over an area. This is our technical photography setup. And here we use three different wavelengths of light, UV, visible and IR. By combining the different light sources with different filters on the camera, we can generate a set of images. And these images are helping us to visualize different materials and pigments in an object. One interesting part of uh, this quipu is this particular cord. It appears colorless in normal visible light, but under UV light, we can see that there is actually two different threads, one light and one dark. This suggests that it could have had a color in the past that has faded over time. <laughs> 